Hey there, pen fans. It's Brian Goulet of the Goulet Pen Company and InkNouveau.com. I'm here to introduce to you the newest Noodler's Ink exclusive that we have at the Goulet Pen Company, Liberty's Elysium. This is an uh, ink that uh, I would say is being talked about, except we pretty much kept it a secret up until a few days ago. But uh, this ink is a, a new ink that we have designed with Nathan Tardif. It's not a repackaging or reformulation of any previous ink. It's something new that we came up with, Nathan. Um, it's pretty cool, very exciting, and we're really happy with how it's turned out. So without further ado, here is Liberty's Elysium. This is the newest Goulet exclusive ink that we developed with Nathan Tardif called Liberty's Elysium. There's a lot going on with this label, and I know it's going to stir some people up. Hopefully it won't, though, because it's all about American history. Nathan is a big history buff, and we have a lot of history going on in Virginia here. Our first exclusive ink that we had is called Purple Heart, and it is in honor of George Washington and his badge of military merit. Uh, we live in central Virginia, and uh, Rachel is from Fairfax, which is right up in George Washington's neighborhood there. So this was uh, developed in honor of him. This bottle was inspired by Patrick Henry. Um, Patrick Henry was raised, uh, born in the Scotchtown uh, plantation, which is only about a couple of miles from where I grew up here uh, in Ashland, Virginia. And we currently have our office in Ashland, Virginia. We're just a couple of miles away from Scotchtown. And in fact, Drew and I both went to Patrick Henry High School and Liberty Middle School. So it's very appropriate here and actually several members of our staff live in the Churchill section of Richmond where Patrick Henry gave his give me liberty or give me death speech. So this is in honor of Patrick Henry and uh, many historical figures that believed in liberty and the ongoing uh, saga of what liberty is all about. That's the Elysium part. So the, um, there's a couple of things going on with this label. The first thing I'm going to focus on is Patrick Henry. Um, this here represents the Virginia Resolves that Patrick Henry introduced. Um, this is not actually his liberty or death speech part, though it does have his quote down here. It says, uh, you know, give me liberty, give me death, Patrick Henry. That's what he's really famous for. But his Virginia Resolves um, is what he introduced in the House of Burgesses in response to the Stamp Act of 1765. And he was accused of treason for what he was saying against the British government. Uh, but uh, Edmund Burke linked him and the Resolves with the Stamp Act uh, opposition that, that derived from that uh, as a major contributor to the American Revolution. So Patrick Henry was, you know, a formative part of that in tandem with George Washington. It was right around that same time. Uh, in here in the middle, we've got Mary Dyer, who was a Puritan turned Quaker back in the mid 1600s up in Boston. And Nathan uh, hails from Boston. His uh, mother's side is actually Quaker. So he has a lot of history uh, himself and a lot of lineage going on um, with, you know, he has a lot of direct ties with, with Mary Dyer. And, and what she stood for. Um, basically, she and Anne Hutchinson believed in, uh, you know, God speaking directly to individuals, and there was a whole Quaker movement moving away from Puritans, uh, and that was a, a big no-no. So she was repeatedly arrested and ultimately hanged for her resolve uh, for free speech and freedom of religion, which was a major contributor well before uh, America was its own country back then. And then the last part of the label here, oh, sorry, Mary, Mary Dyer's uh, quote here, Nay, I came to keep the blood guiltiness from you, desiring you to repeal the unrighteous and unjust law made against the innocent servants of the Lord. Nay, man, I am not now to repent. Pretty firm words uh, for, <laughs> for that time, specifically uh, for a woman to say that too. But um, the last one that we have is Nathan Hale, and Nathan Hale was a soldier in the Continental Army during the American Revolutionary War. He was a um, spy and captured by the British, and he was hanged. Uh, and when he was hanged, he had this very famous quote, I only regret that I have but one life to give for my country. 
So that's pretty much what's going on. We really didn't want to try to stir up any trouble with this label. Really, the, the spirit behind it was that there were a lot of extremely brave people who gave their lives and devoted their lives for what they believed in, which was liberty and freedom. And that's what Nathan and Noodlers is all about. And they're not afraid, and he's not afraid to put, you know, stuff on his bottle. So that might get you fired up in a good way or a bad way, but there you go. Really, let's get down to what is uh, is probably on most of your minds as to what is this ink like. Well, it's blue. It's actually interesting. We had a lot of people in the Fountain Pen Network that were speculating this color before we officially announced what it was. Um, looking for a Goulet Blue, same color that we use for our splatter and our shrink wrap. Um, and I think that was pretty much dead on, to be honest with you. Uh, Liberty's Elysium is very, very close to Noodler's Blue. I love Noodler's Blue. It's almost the perfect shade of blue for me. And uh, I did a review here. I uh, used uh, one of my favorite pens, a Blue Demonstrator Pilot Custom 74, which as many of you know who've been following me for a while, this is kind of my dedicated Noodler's Blue pen. And I think now it's going to be my dedicated Liberty's Elysium pen, because honestly, it is a pretty spectacular ink. Uh, of course, we helped design it. It's a new ink. It's never been used in any other noodlers before. Um, we worked with Nathan to develop this ink. So I'll take you through it right here. I use a Rhodia dot pad, uh, 80 gram white paper. The um, smear test uh, takes a little while to dry, you know, especially on ink resistant paper like this. That's nothing too unusual for the heavier saturated noodlers colors. Um, this color is rather vibrant. I, hopefully it comes across pretty well in the video. It'll be better on the swabs. It'll have on the swab shop and everything. But uh, the main important factor for this ink is that it is bulletproof. Um, the, uh, the nature of this ink is that it takes a while to dry. You can see I smeared a little bit of the top sur surface of the ink when I was, um, I did the drip test where I dropped some water droplets on it, um, and I got a little, just a little bit of color, um, color movement there, um, and I also, you know, dragged a, a, a wet, uh, Q-tip across it, and I was able to get a little bit of color smear, but you can very, very, very clearly see what's underneath, so, um, and I'll show you in, in a minute here when I do a bleach test that uh, it will definitely withstand. Here I did some swabs. I just swabbed one across, two across, three across. You can get an idea of the level of saturation you have. Um, and, uh, you know, ease of cleaning, it's about middle of the road. It's, uh, you know, on par with most of the other bulletproof inks. It might take a little bit of a... Uh, a little bit of work to get it out, but it's not too bad. Get some okay shading, and the flow is very, very wet. It is very wet, but not out of control. It still, um, it still works, works nicely uh, on paper, and it doesn't get a lot of feathering and, and that kind of thing. Um, as far as the color itself, I got some some different inks here that I can compare them to. Okay, so here is. Um, some of the more popular bulletproof blues, Bad Belt and Kingfisher and Bad Blue Heron, these are much darker. They're like blue blacks. But you can see here that Liberty's Elysium is much brighter. It's very similar to Noodler's Blue. Uh, Diamine Aza Blue is not too far off. Uh, and Blue Eel, Noodler's Blue Eel is almost the same as Noodler's Blue. Um, so if you're looking for something that's, you know, as as permanent as Bad Belted Kingfisher and Bad Blue Heron, but you want something brighter and more vibrant, uh, or maybe if you want something, um, you know, similar in vibrancy to Base State Blue. It's not quite where Base State Blue is, but, of course, I just realized after I filmed the video that I didn't compare Liberty's Elysium to Base State Blue even after I mentioned Base State Blue. So I thought, boy, I better save myself some trouble and go ahead and go back and film and include it in the video. So here is Liberty's Elysium next to Base State Blue. I don't know how well the color is going to come across in the video because there's subtleties with these colors that don't necessarily film well, but the Base State Blue is more vibrant for sure. Uh, it's a more purple color than Liberty's Elysium is, but they're both pretty vibrant. Liberty's Elysium is going to have an edge in terms of permanence. Base State Blue has an edge in the vibrancy. So that is the two. I got some other some other inks here that I don't have in swab form. The American Blue um, Private Reserve is pretty close, except you can see that the water resistance is much improved uh, for Liberty's Elysium over American Blue. 
um, Pilot of Roshizuku Kanpeki. That's another one of my favorite blues. And that one does not have nearly the water resistance as Liberty's Elysium as well. And then Roshizuku Suyukusa is another one. Again, water resistance not as good. Okay, so I drew this little grid here about 10 minutes ago. I have a cup of bleach. This is just um, household bleach that you can buy in any store. And I want to show you what bulletproofness will do for your ink. Um, you know, you saw a little bit of color movement with the water. That's just because I had, it's pretty wet writing and I had extra ink sitting on the page. But um, just to give you an idea, this is, this is straight bleach uh, on a Q-tip. And I will get a little bit of color color movement there. You can see that the uh, the ink itself is staying right there on the page and what's happening now you can see that the paper itself is actually wearing away before the ink is. And I'm going to try and go as far as I can here. There you go. I actually wore through the paper. So even if you're using straight bleach, oven cleaners, you know, some of the more aggressive tactics for trying to uh, penetrate these inks, it's not going to happen because this is fraud resistance uh, in very noodler's fashion. And that's the idea, especially because you're talking about Liberty's Elysium. This is something that is meant to be permanent and long lasting. Thank you so much for watching. I'd love to hear what you think, whether you love it, like it, or hate it. Uh, just post in the comments or shoot me an email at brian at Either way, thanks for watching and right on.